Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom screen. <clears throat> Perhaps somebody would like to share what happened during this few minutes. And just make your hand if you like to share. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to invite Nataraj. Would you like to share? Hello. Um, yeah, sure. Um, not much was happening for me. I mean, there were lots of thoughts. Sometimes they disappeared. Then there was silence, mostly my breath, just breathing. The birds from the courtyard but yeah there were a lot of thoughts today okay lakshmi if you'd like to share <clears throat> A very unspectacular, um, very silent. Um, I was, a, I am a little bit um, tired, I must say, but uh, it was very silent and and calm, without so much thoughts today. Very nice. Okay, good. So we have rather a lot of guests tonight. I don't know, I don't want to make you involved when you just like to be quiet, but I particularly like to invite uh, Michaelis from Greece. I think uh, I met you through your assistant, Simon, who's also here with us tonight. Yeah. That's and true. John, I understand hello. And you're now in the south of Germany, is that right? I'm in the south of Crete, actually. <laughs> oh, you're in the south of Greece because you've yeah. got, I think, the Matterhorn behind mm -hmm. you. It's quite a dramatic <laughs> picture from Austria. Or Swiss ah, yes, yeah, it's, it's just the background I use uh, usually. <laughs> you don't want to have the Parthenon or something behind you? Well, uh, the mountains kind of uh, remind me where I should be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, while you're dreaming of the mountains, we're dreaming of Greece. It's nice. It's really hot. The truth <laughs> is it's really hot right now. Oh, hot so night. you're still in Greece, but you're, you're coming to Germany, I understand. Yes, yes, I will be coming in, uh, in fall, I think. I don't yet have the dates, I don't remember, but uh, it will be in the beginning of fall at some point. Okay. So maybe, hopefully, we'll get a chance to see you and... Right, right. Meet in person, probably. Can ah, you... it's November. Simone is typing. It's in November. I'm sorry. November. Never... Oh, uh, yeah. So in November, ah. I'll be here in uh, in in, in, in uh, near Cologne. We're staying in a house oh, near Cologne. Right. In so probably, morning. probably we will meet then. And if you're coming this way, you're welcome to stay with us for a couple of days if you like. That's great. Thank you. We'll, yeah. we'll try to do that. I'll try and do that. <laughs> And uh, we met one of your students. I can't remember now his name, but um, he stayed here for, I think, two weeks. Maybe he told you. I, I cannot recall something. Oh, Did he like it? <laughs> Did he like it? Did he have a good time? <laughs> he enjoyed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay. Nice to talk with you. Nice and, to talk. Uh, of course, we can have much longer time together if you make it here of course of course i'd love to and um who else have we got tonight zoe where, do, where is she we've got a we've got a lady from ah oh, there she's waving yeah so uh, zoe is from uh, ukraine so we, we welcome you tonight she's, Hello. Not, 
She's not in Ukraine right now. I'm <laughs> mix, mix. <laughs> cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan person. Um, you like yes. How it was for you in the meditation? Uh, in our first part, is what's not easy because a lot of thoughts. But when uh, you say going more deeply, uh, I um, feel a silence. Yeah, I be in silence, and now I calm. Right. So now you can feel calm. Yes. In that moment, yes. Not in oh. start. <laughs> By the way, at the beginning of the meeting, you had a portrait up on the screen. Do you remember okay. this picture? Yes, but, but I don't. I, I remember this picture, of course. Very wonderful picture. <laughs> I I have to ask you how old you were because you look a little bit different. Yeah, maybe uh, two years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, something something changed at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Transformation not only inner world and something like the yeah, body also. Okay. Well, we'll have to talk about that sometime. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh I don't know who else do we have. We have Gabrielle who's uh, become a recently become a friend. She came with us to India in uh, January, just recently. If you say something, you'll appear on the screen, Gabrielle. Gabrielle, du müsstest dein Mikrofon noch anmachen. Da ist eine Meldung auf deinem Bildschirm, glaube ich. Now it's on. Ah, okay. Now we see you and hear you. Yes, yeah. nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Did you, get, did you get the picture that we took just as I was leaving uh, Denya? Yes, it's very lovely. <laughs> it's so lovely. Yes, and I, I miss I miss you. I mean, that's why I'm here now. And okay. in the beginning of the meditation, I had a lot of body sensation. I have today like Tommy egg, like, but then later on, when you say allow yourself to fall deeper. It was right. like I could go past it. Right. It was nice. I mean, that's, I could, like, almost like it was this pain here was like, ooh, like this. And then I could go deeper and right. And this was not no more as strong. As Tell before. me, is it right that you work every day in uh, old people's homes as a clown? You're, yes, 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 yes. You're doing what Indira used to do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. It's a very nice job, I think. Yes, it's a beautiful job. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Very it's... special job. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway, you laugh a lot, so I guess you're a pretty happy clown. Mm -hmm. Sometimes clowns are supposed to be not so happy. No, but uh, I'm happy now to be here with the, with the meeting. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so um, you can wave if you'd like me to uh, come to you. Oh, I would like to say hello to Zhu, who you've been staying in Denia this last week as a volunteer. Maybe you'd like to say hello. hello. If you say something, then you appear on the screen. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can see you Hi, hello. Yeah. I've been staying with a wonderful community in Denia, getting to know people here and right. enjoying the beautiful villa and the community here. Okay, good. And where are you from in the States? I'm not from the States. I'm from England, but I live in San Francisco. Oh, you're English, living in San Francisco. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, it's a quite, a, quite a nice place to live, I think. I've visited a few times, a couple of times. Yeah, definitely good good vibe going on. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay, and now you're traveling in Europe? Yeah, I'm um, traveling in Spain and then I'm off to England um, and visiting this community um, to find out what, what it's all about and uh, been very warmly included. Krishna and Kiran, Shanti... Atma, it's been very, very nice 
spending time with them, getting to know them. Did you like our koi? Oh, the koi, yeah. <laughs> the turtle, the turtle. Did he come and say hello to you? The turtle didn't, but the koi did. Oh, okay. Actually, I yeah, the turtle did. I took a good, good photo of the, the biggest one. Right, yeah. He was somebody's very close pet, and he gave us his pet, you know? And somehow he's extremely friendly. I mean, he's he always comes and says hi, and you can lift him out of the water, and he's still happy with that. And the other two turtles trying to escape all the time. Krishna building up the wall, trying to keep them back in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, have a nice time in England. Yeah. Thank you. I'm planning to stay up very late tonight because in America, you may know that there's a presidential debate tonight. So I'm a bit interested. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, so I think uh, I would just introduce tonight's topic. So we carry, I'm carrying on in this book, which is the first of two teaching books. I would say this is fairly simple. And the, the other one, which we were doing uh, a couple of months ago, we went through each chapter. So this chapter tonight is chapter two, I think. Is it? Yeah. And uh, the subchapter is called Passing on the Flame, Passing on the Flame. So this is on the topic of uh, being with an awakened teacher. And uh, so I made a few notes, but you can read the whole chapter in, in that book. Um, and if you don't have a copy and would like a copy, you can get it off our website on Open Sky Press, Open Sky Press. We have a little shop where we're selling our own books and books from uh, other teachers. Uh, so there's no doubt about it. If you really long for truth, then the very best advice is to spend as much time as possible with your teacher. By remembering the teacher, you're actually remember remembering your own true nature. So the teacher acts as a kind of constant reminder. And just by coming in contact in any moment of your life, then effectively you're coming in contact with your own self, the self, and you're also coming in contact with the self of the teacher. So this is the primary role of a teacher. And in my own case, um, I had been many years with um, somebody called Osho. You've probably heard about him. And after he left his body, about a year later, I came in contact with another teacher who showed up in my life. And I spent some short time with him. And then we had a meeting together. And he said to me, uh, very good, very good. Get your things. I was just about to travel back uh, to get my um, belongings. He said, come back. And then you can make a guest house for my people. That's what he asked me to do. And so I did it for more than four years. It wasn't an easy job. And many strong issues that lay unresolved or hidden came up to the surface in this intense environment. It became a kind of laboratory for me to see what was happening inside. Because everybody who stopped, stepped into the guest house came with some kind of lesson or message for me. <clears throat> I don't know what uh, Papaji's intention was, but the result was I saw many of the structures of my mind and slowly but surely became free of them. So I did this job. I had a beautiful modern Indian house and we accommodated about 12 people every night. We had dinner together. I had a cook who would cook for us. And um, I 
had a big marble circle table and we all sat around and um, everybody brought something. It was quite incredible. There would be the, the ones who arrived and put their suitcases in their room and then disappeared. And there were other people arriving and opening their suitcases and very carefully putting everything in the cupboard and on the shelf and arranging their room, very dramatically different. And uh, in between all kinds of other ways of arriving. And of course, some of them stayed longer. So some of them I became quite connected to, became friends with. And I did that job running a guest house for four years. And uh, well, more than four years. And being in India, there was daily dramas. So very often in the morning, the electricity wasn't available. And so I couldn't pump water up into the roof tank. So then there was no, no water for showers in the morning. So that wasn't very popular. And then the other times there was plenty of electric, but then there was no water. So the shower was always maybe, it was always maybe. Um, so running a guest house in India is not the same as running one in Europe where everything kind of works most of the time. Anyway, this was a very strong experience for me. And I can say that, you know, in Western culture, surrender has some overtone of defeat, surrendering to the victory or the victorious. The surrender I'm talking about in regard to a spiritual teacher is not giving up or giving in as a sign of weakness. It is realizing that when I surrender to the teacher, I'm also surrendering to my higher self. It's not actually surrendering to somebody, but rather to the absence of somebody. So although I wasn't always happy running a guest house, having been asked by Papaji to do that, I think I had the uh, one of the two or three biggest guest houses. So we had many, I had many people arriving and leaving all the time. And of course, um, uh, as I said, this brings brought up a lot of things inside of John David. And um, it was a process over four years that gradually a lot of these mind structures would simply disappear. So this was a bit very interesting uh, four years. The self of the teacher and, the, and your self is the same self. On a deeper level, letting go into this relationship means letting go into your true nature. This is such an important topic for everyone to understand. In the deep meeting between the teacher and the student, the possibility is that you realize you are no different from the teacher. What really happens is not that you meet the teacher, it's really that you meet yourself. It's not possible for anybody's mind to ever understand this. You can't figure, figure it out. You can only experience it. And that's the mystery. And uh, this was something that in, in luck now around this master called Papaji, uh, there was a lot of people who had done many years of spiritual practice who were drawn to him. He was, in those days, he was in his 80s, big man and uh, very clear and very energetic. And so every day in his meetings, people would have very big spiritual openings, energetic openings. And he would encourage people to um, uh, accept what had happened to them and to continue to look, continue to look. Because of course, maybe you have a moment of realization, but unless you've already done a lot of spiritual work, you're still gonna have things that can take you away from this realization. And this is what happened to me in the first, probably five or six years, I think. Um, even when I had left like now, I had gone to Australia. I remember I still had a very strong structure of 
I'm not good enough. I didn't particularly believe it anymore, but it used to repeat every day. And um, after some months living in Sydney in Australia, um, I noticed suddenly one day that I, it, it didn't come anymore. It just stopped. So I'd never actually, in a way, did anything, but I was very closely observing this. So whenever it would come up, I would observe it's come up and I would do my best just to watch it and not to involve in it, not to, to take it. And so gradually over some longer time, I think it took, it took about five years, I think, after I had become uh, free of the basic freedom of my mind had happened, but still many times old structures would come back. The challenge in being with a teacher is that you will be told things you don't want to hear or can't hear. There are different levels of hearing. Usually it starts with can't hear and gradually it comes to hear and then really hear. To really hear is very rare because usually when we hear something, we bring in our own belief structures and we immediately make a judgment. If it doesn't yeah. fit with what we already believe, then we can't really hear it and we throw it away. So it's actually quite rare to really let somebody in. And that's one of the reasons why the relationship between the teacher and the student often goes on for some years. The teacher has to be very patient until the student is ready and able to hear. Of course, no student would ever agree with what I've just said, because everybody believes that they're absolutely open, they love their teacher, they're welcoming their teacher, and they would never admit to what I've just said, you see. But after working with many, many people over many years, you gradually get a kind of knack for when the uh, letterbox opens. Maybe not for very long, you have to be really quick and push something through the letterbox while it's open. But if you're lucky, you know, it, it stays open long enough and gradually, gradually, something can happen. But this is not so easy in the beginning because maybe you don't all realize this, but I think most of you realize that we're very much conditioned. So we have many beliefs. And if the teacher is telling us something which doesn't fit, then of course our letterbox goes closed again. And very often we then say, well, anyway, that teacher's not a very good teacher. I look for a better teacher. There has to be a really open-hearted connection between the teacher and the student because the teacher's task of taking away the ego will always come to a painful moment. He can do a few fillings. He can polish your teeth. It's all quite nice, but there are going to be a few rotten old teeth he has to pull out. And that is always going to be painful. A nice teacher who always keeps you feeling really good is not necessarily doing a good job because part of his work is to challenge the ego, which uh, that which prevents you simply living in the self. <clears throat> Projection and resistance to authority, particularly to male authority, are common occurrences for a student with a teacher. It's always frustrating when the teacher is projected onto as somebody. You make him somebody and then you resist that somebody without seeing that you first of all created him and then resisted him. This is a useless game. 
And I can see a couple of people tonight who actually live in my house, live in our community. Actually, I can only see one of these two. And they've been doing this resistance thing for the last two years. This is not helping them and uh, certainly doesn't help me. When your expectations of how a teacher should behave are not met, you have two choices. You can get caught up in your thoughts and judgments, or you can watch your mind at work. Your awareness is always about you. It is never about the teacher. As soon as you have an issue with something or somebody on the outside, then you are already lost. Because in the end, everything has to be brought back to yourself. If the teacher has provoked you into resistance over a powerful issue, something that you don't want to recognize, something that you don't want to see, something that seems to be too terrifying, it is much easier to blame the teacher than to look in the mirror that the situation is offering. And you see, a, a good teacher will, will know you well enough that in a certain moment, he will try to create a situation which he knows will be very uncomfortable. You see, and that's his work. His work is to stir the pot. You see, nothing is personal. So he doesn't see you in, as a somebody and he's not stirring up the pot of the somebody to um, put him into something unpleasant, something nasty, something unfriendly, nothing like that. You know, if it's really a genuine teacher, the teacher is always moving from, from his willingness to support you or to help you or to show you or to whatever it is. You know? So, so if you have this kind of teacher and you feel a deep heart connection, then naturally it makes a lot of sense that you put your trust in this teacher. Because if you resist him, nothing can really work. You see, it doesn't really work. And so if you're finding yourself constantly in resistance, then you have to discover why am I always resistant? You know? What is the reason I'm so resistant? And of course, with with a um, with a, uh, resistance to male authority, it often comes out of the relationship you had when you were very small with your father or a father figure. And then this is projected onto the teacher. And in a sense, in one sense, the teacher is creating that authority because, of course, he is an authority. You've made him an authority. So if this connection of resistance and authority, uh, authority resistance, of course, is going to be very, very common. But you have to see it when it starts happening regularly. You have to see it for yourself and try to be aware enough that it's not happening and not blocking what could be a very juicy, lovely connection, you see. Trust or devotion is very important because this bond of love, this open-hearted connection, includes a tremendous energetic support for going through very difficult moments. If you really want to become free, the work is not finished at the moment of self-realization. The spiritual work continues, cleaning up everything, particularly the conditioned mind. For that, the teacher is very valuable because he has an insight into your false self. And for example, in my case, I've been living in a community now for 20 years, and um, there's nobody still living with me for the whole of the 20 years. But we have quite a lot of people who are still living with me after 10 years. So of course, after 10 years living together, 
eating together and playing together and so on together, um, naturally I come to know easily what are, are the things which are preventing you from simply living every day in the self. And then it's my work, or I, I take it to be my work, um, which we could talk about in a minute. I take it to be my work that I need to find ways to show you what is going on inside you, which is preventing you simply living in your natural essence. Before this meeting, I went to say good night to my daughters. I have two eight-year-old daughters, which is an amazing gift for somebody who's 80. And I, they're twins. And uh, uh, just before the meeting, I said good night to them. And we had a little uh, moment together. And of course, this is, this is in a way, they're in a way my, my, my students, even though they're my daughters, the relationship is also including them being my students. And uh, at the, my ripe age, I would say, in a way, they're not only my students, but actually they're also my final teachers, because living with two little girls, you can't hide at all, you see. They're very good at telling me when I snore like a pig, for example, and so on and so on. So... I can't escape living with two little girls because they're very happy to, to tell me what's going on, what they don't like, what they like. And um, so these are also my teachers, but of course, I also have some intention to be their, their teacher, um, to be their teacher, but they're actually many, many times my teacher. It's a strange paradox that people come to a teacher wanting life to become peaceful. But then they look around and see every, everyone around the teacher is far from peaceful. They say, well, that's a bit funny. He can't be a very good teacher because look at them all. But actually, it's not like that. You have to understand the dynamic that's going on. When you are truly peaceful, nothing can disturb that peace. What the teacher does is act as a kind of catalyst to show you where you're not yet peaceful, to show you what's causing the disturbance. If you become truly peaceful, Whatever the teacher would do or say will never take away from that peace. So if you get disturbed around the teacher, it's because you have issues which haven't been resolved, you see. But once those issues are resolved, then it's really wonderful to be close to a teacher because being close to somebody who is living out of his essence makes it much easier for you to also live out of your essence. And that's why at the beginning, if you remember, I said that if you really uh, long for truth, then the very best advice is to spend as much time as possible with your teacher, you see. And I had many, many years with two wonderful teachers. I was, in fact, spending 15 years with Osho. And he taught me meditation. He taught me self-awareness. And then uh, I had achieved something. I never felt I was completely cooked, but I definitely had achieved a lot. And then uh, he, he passed away. And then uh, I think about something like two years later, I came in contact with another teacher, went to see him, felt deeply touched from the first moment, and um, ended up spending, um, I think it was about five years altogether, a little bit less than five years. <clears throat> So 
So this chapter is called Passing on the Flame, you see. So this is a very beautiful sort of metaphor, you know. So you can imagine a, a candle, a, a, a lighted candle, who is the master, and he, you come to him as an unlit candle, and in the right moment, the the the, the light, the lighted uh, candle, the flame, is passing to the candle which is not yet a light, and this is then passed. It's then passed. It's very simple, actually. Unfortunately, we have many ideas about how things should be working. And um, the reality is that it's all very, very simple. It's not complicated at all. You just have to watch out of a quiet mind. So the first work is to achieve a quiet mind. And um, we, we have a, a lady from Spain in our community at the moment. Who we met now about, um, I think, two months ago. And being Spanish, she she when we met her, she was very noisy. She never could stop talking. If you spend time in Spain, you'll know that the national pastime in Spain is talking. And uh, they love meeting in the street in the evenings, having dinner together and talking, talking, talking. So it's difficult for Spanish people. In fact, after 10 years living in Spain, I think I can only say that I've really got three Spanish students. So it's quite hard work in, in Spain because they love their talk. But this lady finally, after two months, I hope she'll like what I'm saying to her, she's uh, now becoming really quite quiet. And I guess what I've been saying to her tonight, which she would mostly agree with, and I'm going to tell her now that in a minute, I'm going to ask her if she likes to, to respond to what I'm just saying to her. Okay. So if anybody would like to have a little chat or a little dialogue, you just have to wave your hand. <clears throat> so shall we start with Nadini? Her English is not completely perfect, but it's pretty good. So Nadini, would you like to say hello? Yes, of course. <laughs> hello. <laughs> okay. So, uh, did you understand what I was saying about you? Yes, of course. <laughs> and it's true, yeah? We had a talk. Yeah, it's true. We had a talk yeah. a couple of days ago, and uh, I noticed you become much quieter. Yeah. Really, it's like I need to stay with me, you know? Right, right. And what happens when you stay with you? Yeah, very much things <laughs> inside. Right. Very much noise. All right, right. Yeah. yeah. But it's good. Very good. Just yeah. breathing. Yeah, I mean, this is what, in a way, you wanted when you came uh, to the retreat. You, you wanted to look and get free of all these patterns, structures inside you, in your mind, which have been there maybe for many, many years. And yeah. Repeating inside you and uh, how to get rid of them. It's not so easy. No. No, it's not so easy. <laughs> it's actually, it's very hard sometimes. You're right. It's very deep. Yeah. And some of these patterns are sometimes bringing up painful memories, yeah? Painful memories or painful yeah. emotions. Yeah, so much pain. And sometimes I feel very much love. Right. So well, much love. <laughs> yeah. And this love is not exactly love for somebody, yeah? This is just no. in a, in a feeling inside you of a kind of big space, yeah? Something that becomes bigger and lighter. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so big. 
then sometimes I'm I have scare, you know, because I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scared because uh, I don't know how I what I need to do with so much love inside. Oh, I need to dance. <laughs> I dance in the garden every day. Yeah, if you want to dance, dance. Yeah, and and share love with hugs. Yeah, it's very good. Very simple, yeah. Yeah, and it's free. It's not so expensive, you know. <laughs> so you remember about one month ago? I think you came to the retreat about a month ago so in this month you you've gone through a sort of spanish inquisition gradually getting quieter not such an easy time maybe in the beginning yeah and now you've come to experience that when you become really quiet there is inside you there's a kind of huge space that just is just there you don't do anything you just suddenly find it's like you find the, the paradise suddenly. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I have days when I am have uh, just strange emotions and I just need to breathe because sometimes I'm, oh, I don't have air, you know? <laughs> but um, stay with your silence it's not so easy, uh, you know, because my mind just tell me things, everything, oh, every, every day and every moment, just. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but do you yeah. notice that it gradually gets a bit less? Does it get a bit less in the last time? Yeah, of course. Right. I'm so relaxed now, right now. I remember uh, one mm, mountain before. I don't um, want to speak in public. You know, I'm always ashamed because I, my mind is telling me some many shit. <laughs> but look at me. I'm so happy to sp speak in English. <laughs> It's so good. I have a very good English. <laughs> yeah, right. You're not supposed to speak English, but now you actually speak. Yeah. Speaking for 10 minutes, very good English. Yeah, Nandini speak English. Very good. <laughs> right. Okay, very nice. Thank you. Maybe somebody would like to volunteer. I prefer you to decide if you want to have a chat. Somebody likes to uh, do this. Uh, we can talk together. <laughs> ah, okay. There I am. Arjuna. Arjuna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it's everything you said, or the, the whole chapter is just so resonating with me. From I mean the. The guest house meetings every day with the guests. It's so interesting to see the, I mean, out of nowhere, suddenly structures appear when I just look at a guest, when I open the door, be it when they have a very stern look that I'm a bit intimidated or when they're more young and sporty and I'm like, okay, this is more my, how I identify. And then we immediately have some fun. So that's really, really helpful every day to have these these mirrors even though often i am just like oh no i don't want to do it now but then it's, <laughs> right, it's right. very interesting yeah yeah but, I mean, it's, uh, it's really yeah. a gift you see i mean running a guest house in india is much more difficult than it is in germany i can tell you but even with all the problems of the water the electricity the servants don't show up when they're supposed to show up you know and all kind of stuff um, but still, I got such an incredible benefit. And you, it sounds like you're also getting the same kind of benefit now. Every time you open the front door, somebody is there and 
as you say, if they're looking rather um, stern and unfriendly, if one kind of emotion starts working inside you, and then somebody else comes, uh, maybe some children are there, or, and, and you notice how all these things impact inside you, and your mind immediately kind of then responds. And these are patterns that you maybe recognize have been happening through your life. And now somehow in the environment of our community, uh, they, they, they ha have a slightly different meaning to you because now you know what you want to do. You know you want to get rid of all this kind of uh, thoughts and all these kind of structures. And so you see what's happening every day, whatever it is, is actually helping that. And this is actually the beautiful thing about our community that whether you're working in the kitchen, whether you're working in the guest house, whether you're cleaning rooms in the guest house or you're welcoming the guests, whatever the function that we, we are doing at any one time, it gives us some kind of new insight into what's going on inside our mind. Yeah, and I can see that more clearly the more time passes. Like a lot of a lot of things, all this coordinating, but like being boss in some situations and in other situations, being the, the one who works for the other and having to to be in order and having to like say no to some things and have the, the courage or the seeing the resistance to, to delegating stuff because of all the structures in my mind. It's really like every day I see those, those stories appearing and and changing yeah what i wanted to say is that <laughs> i i hope you're patient with me because when we were in the sangha after the long meditation when i was very close very contracted and opened up at the end i could really feel when i when i looked at you how how much better and how much more open i can I can be in understanding you because I could really see that in some way that it's it's my it's really myself just wanting the best for me and and talking to me and just after the meditation I could really see that for for a few moments yeah yeah but you know I'm somehow at the moment maybe I'm uh, my one of my strong functions with you is to help you to release this uh, authority you have you have something with authority yeah? so this makes sometimes a bit difficult between us but also uh, that's going to change it takes some time but it's also going to change oh, yeah. actually i would be rather interested to talk to your sister she's here for <laughs> few days. i didn't get to meet her yet but maybe if she likes i could meet her tomorrow uh which one is your sister now Janine. Janine. Would you like to say hello, Janine? So I'm very curious to ask you if you think your brother has uh, is any different now than the last time you saw him a few months ago. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, yeah, he's totally changed in a way yeah. and in another he's still the same in some right. parts right i think what i love most about the change is that i see there's so much joy inside of him right so much calmness also and so much being attentive and present with whomever he's talking to and listening to right and this is very impressive for me also because I tend to be someone who sometimes interrupts people while they talk right. and I see that he's so calm and really really listening and wanting to understand you and this is what I really love to see right I mean you probably know that I think, well, I don't know his story exactly, but as far as I know, already for some time, he's been doing uh, his own spiritual work and and making that his priority and, and his outer job in the world, it wasn't his priority anymore. 
and then he came to this community and you probably he's probably told you that once he came here for a volunteer week he he couldn't really leave and uh, he, he, i think he's been here since that first week when he couldn't leave he just said well i can't really leave and i'd like to stay here and um there was another lady who's on the uh, meeting tonight ananda the two of them arrived at the same time and um I think this is quite a wonderful way to arrive in our community. And in fact, tonight, there's a young lady who's on, in the meeting called Saraswati. Maybe you met her in the house, I think. So yeah. um, she also came to a different volunteer week. And since she, oh no, she came to a meditation weekend, I think. She came to a meditation weekend. And that was about, I think, two months ago, or three months ago. And uh, tonight she's telling us that she wants to join our community because she can't leave. So <laughs> this is very touching, of course, and uh, is perhaps the most powerful way to arrive in this kind of community. Yeah. And I understand you have a son. I didn't meet him yet. How old is he? He is one year old, almost. Year in old. three oh. weeks, he turns one year old. Yeah. Oh, he's very small. Yeah. 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 He's sleeping right next to me with his little feet touching my legs. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll, I'll be happy to meet him. Yeah. Are you here tomorrow? <laughs> Only until 10 in the morning, and then I'm going to leave for... Oh, you're going uh, to leave at Frankfurt 10? Again. You have to yeah. leave at 10? Because I have to go to a doctor at 10.30. I'm a doctor. <laughs> oh, you're a doctor, yeah. Well, I'd rather probably have you as my doctor than... Uh... <laughs> Anyway, I have a nice lady in the village here, so I, it only takes me 10 minutes. So maybe just before you leave, we can say hello. If you yes, want. it would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. The only problem is that tonight I'm going to be going to bed at four in the morning. So I may not be <laughs> in a good state tomorrow morning at 10. <laughs> I will probably be awake at four because of this little soul sleeping oh. next to me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, so same for me. I'm not going to be in my bed. Then. Yeah. I think after listening to Trump and Biden, I'll be happy to uh, meet your son. <laughs> okay, very nice. Anyway, come back and see us again. Yeah? Do you live yeah. near here or are you far away? It's so easy to get here, even with the baby in the carrier. So yeah. it's Frankfurt, like two hours with the train. It's so easy. So okay. okay, so come back. I absolutely gonna come back, yeah. Right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so maybe somebody else would like to have a talk. Atma, the famous Atma is gonna talk. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, it's um when you talk told us um, about that there is the letterbox can be shortly open and then the teacher needs to be very quick um, to put something um, through it. So I see it that um, I'm sometimes open but very short time. And then I close down again because I, I I, I know that I see, I don't see you as the teacher, I see you as a person. And that makes it all, yeah, for me very difficult, but I, it's, um, I don't know how to, yeah, change it because it's, it's now a long time and it's still like this. Yeah, but you have to see, Atma, that you see yourself as a somebody yeah somebody who likes this and doesn't like that you know you have something going on about almost everything so it keeps you completely locked in the somebody i gave you this name atma which means the self you know because mm -hmm. there was a little happening in the indian retreat and i felt that you know maybe that would help you so you have to try to remember your name atma atma means the self and you're not, you're not somebody, you're the self. It's because the self is beyond somebody. You have to somehow understand that you're not a somebody. This is an old habit. It's a terrible old habit 
along with most of the population of planet Earth, you think you're a somebody. And you're a somebody with all kinds of ideas, what you like, what you don't like. John David does this, and John David doesn't do that, and I don't like this, and I like that, and why doesn't he do what I like, and why, why is he always trying to put something in my letterbox? I mean, I'm not sure if I ever got anything in your letterbox in two years. But you're still here at the moment, you know, you're still here. So if you're going to be here, you have to look at why you want to hold on to being a somebody so strongly. Nothing to do with John David. It's completely to do with the fact that you don't seem to have enough trust in life to open up to the possibility that you're much greater than somebody. Mm. But for that, you need to trust a bit in life, and you don't trust very much. No. It's got nothing to do with John David. You can make it to do with John David, but after you've done that, it doesn't help you much. You have to see that you're the somebody, that you're making yourself the somebody. Not so comfortable, yeah. Now you don't. Right now, you probably don't like me very much. You see, but no, no, do, no. You see, I have to tell you what's going on because you don't want to see it for yourself. You could see it for yourself, but you don't seem to want to see for yourself. You want to hold on to what you believe, what you were told. Yeah, I, yeah. So I I really, I can see that I don't trust in life. It's very difficult for me. So tell me, Emma, if you don't trust in life, what is the alternative? What's the alternative, darling? There's only life, you know? You're part of that life. If you can't trust in the thing that you're part of, what can you do? There's no alternative. Yeah, so far I'm not thinking. <laughs> but you have to look, you have to become aware about your your situation. Yeah. Okay, good. Anyway. Okay, so we still have some more time. Anybody else? Okay, Joe from USA, I think. We have two Americans today, rather unusual. Would you like to say a couple of words, Joe, and then you appear on the screen? Joe, do you have your microphone on? Maybe try, Joe, if you go on the left side in the menu down to the microphone symbol and then click on the arrow, the small arrow, and choose a different microphone. Maybe there's some headphone microphone or, yeah. Okay, is it working? <laughs> Can you help him a bit more, Om? I think he. We can't yet hear it. Did you try both the. Uh, uh, computer? And. The headphone. All right, does that work? No, that's no. the uh, dynamic no. microphone. That Through working? The same thing. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Where, where are you sitting now? Are you in Europe or in the USA? Um, I am. I am in the uh, United States. I, I say. I hope you enjoy that debate <laughs> later. Um, <clears throat> so I. This is the. 
uh, yeah, I didn't discover this until recently. I saw your uh, blueprints to uh, awakening, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. And so I had no idea about you or any of this, um, but I appreciate, I just wanted to say, I appreciate your message about maximizing, you know, time with a teacher and shedding your projected, uh, our own projected expectations and desires. You know, we're, especially here in the U.S., we're a culture of externalization and blame. It's everyone, it's everyone's problem, but my own, everyone else is at fault, but I'm perfect. So that, you, that's, you... that's. I don't know if you heard me, but I'm planning to watch Biden and Trump tonight. I guess yeah. that's just about the pinnacle of what you were just saying. About right. Blaming and the go. Oh. Yeah, it the toxicity of all of that. So I appreciate that message. I also, uh, for me, uh, I guess personally, <clears throat> I've been in a mode of uh, kind of going about my daily life and duties and you know, accepting what's in front of me and letting go of sort of, because there's in the West anyway, there is a lot of, there's a lot of social, I'm sure with everywhere, social media culture, you know, and marketing that we have to go to special locations or be with specific people or pay a lot of money for travel and books and uh, uh, classes and all that and retreats in order to remind ourselves of our own true nature. So I don't think those <laughs> things are bad. They're perfectly fine it's a great way tell you, tell you something you were mentioning about the the project blueprints for awakening yeah was that the indian masters because recently uh, on youtube we put up i think it was six of the original interviews so if you go onto youtube and put my name you can you can see the original interviews i did with all those masters because in in the book we also i think printed the full interviews but if you've seen the film, we made a film also. And in this film, we took the, the um, kind of cream of each master. But recently, I felt it would be good to um, put onto YouTube the original interviews so you can see them there. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I have. I did see those. And I'm uh, I'm actually go. It's funny you mentioned that because I'm, I'm going through them. I was watching. Uh, Aja, I think it's pronounced, right. which was fantastic. I like how when people go to his ash, when people used to go to his ashram, some people would get perturbed because he'd put people to work. I think that's great. You know, that finding the sacred in the mundane and letting go of these notions that it had, like you're saying earlier, that has to be a certain way. Right, right. Yeah, he was a but, very uh, authentic kind of teacher, you know, very... Uh... I remember one day when I was staying there in the ashram, I woke up quite early for me, maybe around six. It was just beginning to get light. And he he actually woke me up because when I when I looked out of the window, he was outside the window with about <laughs> uh, eight guys and they were moving soil to make a new road or something. I don't know. I don't remember exactly. And he was like right there. You know, he was all, definitely over 80 by then and he was you know, running around, telling everybody what to do. And, uh, of course, he was a very hands-on kind of guru. I mean, he was more like a friend, you could say. And I like uh, that. Most of his students lived with him in, in the small ashram. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Have you been to India yourself? Never, no. Okay. But you've worked with a teacher, I can feel. Um, not, not, not directly. No. I mean, I've attend, I mean, I've, uh, I've been looking into this for some time, but no, I've never actually sat in person with a teacher. Oh, okay. Okay. And which state are you living? Where do you live in the States? Uh, Ma uh Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's an Advaita group. Uh, but they they don't really meet routinely. But that was occasionally they'll have meditation sessions. So I do, you know, there are some virtual things, but not as much right um, in the in the West. Right, right. Okay. Anyway, it's very nice for us to have somebody from the states. And tonight, remarkably, we have two people. One is 
staying at the moment in our house in Spain and, and you're directly from uh, the East Coast. So that's very nice. What's the time there at the moment? Uh, it's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. Ah, oh, okay. Quite a civilized hour then. <laughs> <laughs> Tea time. Okay, good. Anyway, thank, very nice thank you so you much. And, I, for, yeah. I appreciate being here. Okay. Okay, we, we still have a bit more time. So anybody else like to join? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? This Zoom. It never occurred to me to do something like Zoom <clears throat> until we had this COVID time. And then I started doing it. And, and now, isn't it fantastic? We can have somebody from maybe Boston in, in uh, Massachusetts. And we have somebody from Spain. We have somebody from Ukraine, although she's actually not very far away from where I am. We have somebody from Greece. Uh, where else do they come from? Most of them are, most of you are local here, I think. I guess uh, I didn't yet say hello to Simon. Would you like to say hello? You're probably also in Greece, I guess. Hi, everyone. I'm in Spain. I'm in Canary Islands. Oh, you're in the Canary Islands. <laughs> okay, nice. Mm. You're having a holiday from Greece, are you? No, no, I live here. I met oh, you me live in the, oh, you live in the Canary Islands? Exactly, yes. Oh, okay. I met Michalis when he was teaching here and um, okay. in this world for one year now, a bit more than one year. Oh, very nice. Okay, good. You have a nice... Um, Chakra, um, what kind of? Ah, oh, it's fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And behind you have also a nice pattern. I've forgotten what it's called. Right behind your head. This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has a special name, but I don't remember it. Mihalis knows. It's like the flower of life, is it? Oh, yeah, flower of something. Yeah, flower of life. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so so how thank you for having you, us today. Excuse me? Uh, how are you going on? I mean, uh, we, we, we talked uh, maybe a few months ago now, yeah? Yes. Um, I, you know, I, I just started with uh, all the, those um, meditation and with, with the teachings, a lot of uh, Tantra and, and um, yeah, we're doing a, a uh, meditation teachers training now and I'm really dragged into it it's, it's yeah. wonderful to to keep learning yeah and is there interest in the Canary Islands I mean there are lots of people who come to the meetings and so on um there's a lot going on actually um but right now to be honest um there's a lot of um how to put it? <laughs> it's kind of um, a, a lot of women's circles um, doing breath work and and those things, no, like Kundalini awakening. They use all those. To me, <laughs> really, I, I am I'm trying to be very honest. Those sacred words first, and and it's to me, it's everyone is trying to be a teacher, but there there are very few. Or none real teachers, no. Right, so right, right. Maybe they they didn't know how to how to really appreciate the good ones yet. So yeah. So now we're um we're trying to to get to to Germany to see more things, no more to reach out. There's a, there's a lot of genuine. I mean, I I've been now in Germany for twenty years, and when I first came came here I had no idea I was going to be living in Germany so I've never learned German because I was always temporarily here you know and now my children go to school and of course speak German and um, I can't speak German to them but luckily they speak uh, also English yeah. oh that's nice yeah. okay it's... very nice to see you again and maybe when you travel with your um your friend from Greece. I mean, uh, please come and stay with us if you like. In the he's my teacher. It sounds like in November you're coming, yeah. Yes, in November we go to to have um, a first contact there, in but in the south, in in, in Munich. Right. 
starting and then we, it's not all planned out we're just trying to reach out and and make a plan all right good well i wish you well thank you thanks beautiful for beautiful city in munich a little bit conventional yes. but uh, it's anyway beautiful yeah. okay uh who else have i who else is new tonight Zoe, I was raising her hand. Oh, Zoe, yeah. Um, Actually, well, Zoe's uh, not speaking from Ukraine. She's just down the road. <laughs> I'm trying to try explain myself by English. Uh, well, actually, when you read a book, yeah, uh, I hear information, text, yeah, about your structure not good enough. And um, it's very close for me because I see that uh, in my personality a lot. And this, this is why um, sometimes, not sometimes, like in past usually, I'm very close. I'm in a very resistant and uh, feel resistance, yeah, and like like safe zone, yeah, like nobody touch me, nobody in safe zone. And actually it's uh, very interesting because um, after, Mm, last month, yeah, after Tantra weekend, I feel like a few days is very open, open heart and very sensitivity for everything. So um, a lot of feelings and everything coming from me and everything happened with me uh, and it's okay. And um, I'm also sometimes in the day, yes, feels that not good enough. Uh, but uh, in another way, yeah, I see like, okay, it's not good enough. It's not about Zoya. It's it's more easy uh, live like that. Yes, um, I don't know. It's what I want to say. <laughs> it's not the question. I want to share something. Yeah, I'm very happy you decided to join the meeting tonight, and also you came to the recent tantra weekend which um, as far as I can feel, everybody enjoyed a lot with Radha. I'm very happy for Radha that, you know, she's now set, her ship is now sailing the ocean of Tantra. And uh, of course, something like Tantra is a rather lovely way to open up, yeah? Because just from uh, massaging or touching other people in a weekend like that, kind of in a way playing simple games, without really thinking too much about it, without really in one way learning something, just just play. Out of this play, as you say, you discover how open you suddenly became. Yeah, so like is, that's always all, all about me. Like, wow, it's a big space, you know. Right. Lovely right. space. Right, right. And, the, you know, you may not, you may not notice every day when you come to the meditation, you may not not notice that a lot is changing from one day to the other but regularly meditating is having a profound effect inside you even if you don't see it if you don't notice it and then you do the tantra weekend and then now you're saying you know now i feel really wonderful and that sort of i have a new a new sort of sense about myself you can say yeah you have a new sense yeah. for yourself yeah, it's like different, like one way and different way. It's right. like wow, wow for me. It's very, and, very and, as you, and as you as you now in a way sort of plugged in, you can say as you as this happens more and more for you, gradually over yeah. time, you will naturally discover that you're achieving what you would like to achieve. You know, so this is makes it easier and easier in a way. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> In the first part, it's not too easy. Now, it's inner and not not motivated. It's like, wow, I want more. I think you, you may not notice it when you come to the lunchtime meditation here, but you're also getting the benefit without hardly noticing it of the basic energy here in the community, you know? And this, yeah. is, this is a very profound... Um, energetic uh, kind of cloud that hangs here and as you come in to do the meditation go out after the meditation you're also being touched by this energy which is kind of invisible yeah? yes that's true yeah. okay 
Very good. Nice. So if there's another person who likes to wave their hand, we can have a talk. Otherwise, I would now, uh, I think we've uh, been together long enough. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. So we do this meeting again next week at the same time. And uh, I'll be talking something from chapter three. Okay, thank you.